Uh, are you guys pretty much getting started right now? Perfect. I'm excited, huh? How's it? Oh, sorry? I can hear you, Jason. Yeah, oh, man. Sorry, man. Yeah, I can hear you. When did the round start? In uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Just had a really fun game with my Team Kings. That was fun. They are indeed, and they're 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 actually really good. There we go, the list and stuff. Uh, it'd be really good to make it over like how it's shaken up and if there was any like upsets or you know any like uh, armies that were that we didn't expect up at the top. Do you have? Yeah. Do you have? I'm ready. Oh my goodness, really? That is amazing. That's luck. That's a. Uh, I say. Hey, what's happening guys? This is round five at the Desperate Allies GT Tournament. We are featuring the top table today. Justin Lois and Josh Stewart. Justin is playing his Admech army. While Josh is bringing an army that was always discounted. What was that army, Bam? Necrons. So, uh, you know, and, and Justin's running a, it's more of a soup list. There's a big detachment of Admech. Uh, Castellan and some guard. I do believe his guard though is a little different other list. Uh, it was going with Cadian whenever he's running it. So he's got a battalion of Cadians, a uh, battalion of Edmac, and the Castellan. Doing pretty well with it this weekend. And Josh running him some Necrons. There's been a couple of Necron players at this event that have done exceptionally well. Surprising and catching a lot of players off guard. And then we also have our guest, Scary. Maybe. Scary should be back. Remember Scary? He helped uh, Shoutcast on game one. I hope I see you talking, but it's not coming out. So we're working on his audio. Oh, he just left. Probably come back in. Hello? Maybe, maybe this will work. There we go. Hooray! All Life right. is always better with a box of chocolates. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. So we wanted to go over a list real quick for this final round. So we look at Justin's list. All right. I'm quite excited to see, you know, what comes of this game. What are you anticipating? Um, well, I want to take a look at the list first, but um, I feel like Admech have all the tools that they need to win this game, and I feel the player in control of them has good experience. Yeah. There's a... Justin's got a, uh, a group of the... what's officially known by some as the, the chicken walkers with lances. Yep. Uh, they do a lot of damage. Tasers uh, can be nasty. And they do a lot of work for him. Uh, Bulgrins run out there and bully the center of the board. 
and kind of, you know, once Bulgrins get on something, if they can be buffed, it is hard to get them removed. And, you know, there's a mixture of slab shields and invulnerable shields, you know, depending on what's firing at you. Uh, you can get either a three up invuln or a, uh, you know, a, just a two up regular save if you're doing it right. So 100%. It's uh, kind of a variation of what the, uh, the medalist is. Uh, I do like the the chicken walkers in it though. It does bring a little bit of variety instead of just seeing, you know, outriders things like that and a huge brigade. Uh, to be able to see an ad map contingent is kind of neat. I think that um, if you know, ad mech have all the tools you need. You know, in the sense that they can, um, you have like some really cool. What in the heck is going on? Are you dragging the deployment zones? I'm trying to. It's a... Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. It didn't actually work out this time. Let me do it again. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm going to try and hook up through my... Hey, whoever subscribed, thank you. Uh, you made Jason have a minor seizure. That's always fun. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. I got Scarry. Go ahead, man. Sorry. Woo! I mean, so for some reason, yesterday the uh, my computer wasn't letting me hook up through the computer. But today, I've got my headset on. I feel comfortable. I'm not doing it through my phone. Nice. You do sound a lot more clear. Oh, that's that's you know you have these fancy ear ear sets for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> is this uh, is this advanced Drakari technology that you've managed to come uh... up with today? I uh, had to kill one of my um, my uh, my brethren from the craft worlds to steal some bone singing stuff. It's great fun. Okay. I'm I'm, su I'm surprised it's such a small unit of Bulgrin, but at the same time, you don't really need that many Bulgrin to do to well, have like good effect on the middle of the board, in my opinion. Yeah, if they can get inside terrain and uh, get a little bit of cover, it's hard to get them out of something without actually going in there after them. Uh, I do think having the uh, the chicken walkers uh, will will distract a, a huge amount of fire from the Bulgrins because if you ignore them and let them get a charge off on you, that can be a little bad. Mm. And uh, yeah, Vin Vin Carroll, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Admech does have the cheapest uh, battalion available in a lot of ways. Uh, you can bring the cheapest level priests and some rangers and get you a quick five CP. Hey, Insante13, uh, yeah, the tires are definitely mic'd. We just have to do a couple levels. Um, hopefully, there won't be any rage moments, but I do have my yellow and red cards ready to card if needed. And so far, both these players have had a, uh, a reasonably good tournament. No incidents. Um, Josh is pretty cool and level-headed in most instances. Justin has had some difficult tournaments, but this tournament for him seems to be a good one. So Necrons, we have um, Doomsight, Doomsight, Doomsight. Triple Doomsight. Do, doesn't that give them like a? Don't they have like a special stratagem? Yes. That, like they can do like a, a mega mortal wound thing. That's key to this list. Uh, the other Necron lists that are here are running the same thing. So uh, say Josh gets uh, turn one, uh, Justin's really going to have to watch this deployment because if you leave stuff clumped up together, uh, those flyers can get within range and basically start putting uh, 3D, I think it's 3D6 mortals on stuff, and it can get rather nasty. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds very exciting. Yeah. All right, I got pro proper pronunciation, uh, Vin Carrell, I hope that's it. If not, dude, you're just gonna have to put up with my thick ass Kansas tongue saying it wrong. <laughs> That's fairly accurate. There we go. I got the deployment zones almost fixed. Disappointment zones or deployment zones? Uh, oh, but both. pointy, pointy uh, hammer and pointy hammer and anvil. The, okay. At Ray of the Veteran Gamers Relisted calls it the pointy houses. Pointy houses. Yes. I like it. <laughs> he is uh, a marine, so he's a simple man. Cool. Any uh, any questions in chat? You have to yeah, let's know story. what's going on. Um, and it, what does Soltec Dynasty do? That's a good question. Let me go look it up real quick. I can pull up the Necron book. So he's got 10, 20, 30 Immortals. 
Kids. Oh man, this this list is terribly formatted. <laughs> It's like each <laughs> tomb blade. Each tomb blade is like an individual tomb blade. Tomb blade. Tomb blade. Tomb Looks blade, like <laughs> tomb blade. Tomb blade. Tomb blade. So how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm assuming nine. On the board. Yes, he does have quite a few on the board. They're already being deployed. So two right, what, uh, what house? Three doom sides. What you asked about? Sotek. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Relentless Advance. If a unit with this code advances, it treats all ranged weaponry it is equipped with as an assault weapon until the end of the turn. E.g. a rapid fire one weapon is treated as an assault one weapon, and a heavy D6 weapon is treated as an assault D6 weapon. In addition... Well, you... you want me to finish? Or you no, want... no, yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, no, no it's... go ahead. <laughs> In addition, unless it has advanced this turn, a unit with this code does not suffer the penalty to hit rolls Removing and firing heavy weapons. So that affects the doom sides, I'm assuming. Ah, uh, pretty I mean, sure. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I, I, I like the fact that he's been he's gone this far. He's played some, like he's probably played some really nasty lists, but he definitely has the tools to deal with that Castellan meta for sure. Yeah, I know. Yesterday he had a uh, orc list, you know, with a typical huge blob of ludas. And uh, he managed to to get out of that one with a win and, and demolish the Lutus on the board. Nice. It's exciting. It so is. they're going back and forth. We have, uh, it seems to be 11 command points for the, um, and 10 command points for the Necrons. Got his good old drill. Those those forge world drills are fantastic. Yeah, Josh uses it pretty well. Uh, it comes out uh, as it comes out. The units that are inside can actually pop out three inches, getting a potential six inch charge. And from what I've seen him play with that, it's been a delivery method for his electro priest. Which, if uh, folks at home don't know what electro priest can do, uh, if you let them get into something and they kill it. You're dealing with a unit that has a three plus plus all game, and uh, they can wreak havoc in your backfield. Yeah, no, I, they can disembark after deep striking. I believe this way it's written. Uh, I've seen Justin uh, a couple games actually start that with just, it on the board. Just the drill. Just yeah. the, the drill has that special rule. Oh, okay. I'm. Uh, it's a question, because normally. Um, Anything that's in the transport cannot disembark after it. Um, Let's go read it. After it because uh, you have to disembark off before the, the vehicle moves. One second here. We'll, we'll clear it all up. Uh, yeah, they can, I think that's a special thing yep. for it, though, because it's a Let's go read it real quick here. Isn't that the best um, best rule ever? It's just it's Forge World. All right, subterranean assault. During deployment, you can set up this model along with any units embarked in an underground instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, the model can perform a subterranean assault so that anywhere on the battlefield is more than nine inches away from any models. That's all pretty standard. Any yeah, units standard. embarked inside can then immediately disembark, but they may be set up more than nine inches away from enemy models. Ah. Any models that cannot be set up this way, they must have FAQ'd it because before I believe you could pop up next to stuff after the old rule. The old rule here just didn't have that disembark caveat. It only had that it can set up anywhere within nine. Yeah, so I, it looks like they someone went and did the bad touch to it because other people were bad touch using it. Isante, so yeah, they have to be nine inches away. They can disembark. Cool. That's that's a cool little rule. You know, not that's like a drop pod style rule that you can like disembark as soon as you get them out, which is pretty neat. Yeah, Asante, if he does get closer than nine inches, then he is definitely cheating, and we will love to see that rule. We will be keeping an eye on it today. You know, I'm, I'm really excited to actually just see Necrons at the top table right now. Yeah, it's exciting. We had at the Barry Bash last weekend, we had Necrons on the second table. Yeah. So let me tell you about my RTT last weekend. Um, I went to play 
and uh, second game, one of my teammates lost the Necrons. So I was going to relentlessly insult him and make fun of him. And then I wound up on top table playing Necrons, and I freaking lost. So I lost all rights to harass and berate and make fun of my teammate. And I got a newfound respect for Necrons after last weekend. Yeah, Necrons. Uh, you know, there's a there's a Necron player around our area that is called Sebastian, and uh, he he's been a tournament goer and has essentially played Necrons. Hasn't diverted from Necrons for the whole time he's been playing 40k, and uh, some of the lists he takes are really really nasty. You know, it's funny how if you get to know your book inside and out, you can really kind of cook up some really interesting things. In my opinion, I agree. I I do think though that uh, you know with the amount of points that the Doom sides are, I call them the the flying croissants. Uh, the flying croissants, you know, they have enough movement on them that you should be able to get them out of range of a lot of things, and hopefully get all three of them into the position if you go first to pull off the the mortal wound shenanigans. So. You know, that's extremely powerful. It's a gimmick that I've, I think everybody's kind of stumbled across recently. So if Josh goes first, I would expect to see that. I like the uh, to deployed here. And I guess where the castling gets put down will really kind of determine how this game pans out. Yeah. The, the like, ghost... to be honest. A Castlin is going to be absolutely useless against those Doomsday Arcs. That's that's where I was going. With the Quantum Shielding, they're not going to, you know, 3d3 damage is not hard to roll underneath. Um, I would, uh, the Castlin's probably going to go after those Flyers turn one. Yeah. They do get hard to hit, so maybe the negative one will help them be a little bit more survivable. So, of course... When I play against against a Castlin list, I'm trying to kill everything that isn't the Castlin as quickly as possible. I feel like the termite drill and those uh, d the chicken walkers are the things that have to kind of get dead sooner yeah. than later. If uh, Josh gets those lances into his units in the backfield, he's gonna. I don't know if he can really recover. No, <laughs> and those uh, those those the the. The, the dune striders or whatever they're called he, they hit like a like a ton of bricks with the <laughs> plus one the plus two to hit strat essentially so they have like exploding attacks on fours and and they have a minus one to hit against shooting and so tesla is not going to be as good against them for example yes i i do like justin's list i think there's some very cool elements of it it's uh Isante, those are mortars and they're in the bottom of the build like they're in the building it's an enclosed ruin they've just uh they've put it on top of the building to represent that okay uh monk south sixes Grons will be going first all right i believe josh got first turn. okay um, oh, do I get either of them? Oh, ba boom! <laughs> I think that was a seize. That definitely looked like a was it a seize? Like a fancy seize. It oh my! Nice yeah, it was a seize, and Imperials go first. Oh my goodness, he's making everything in cover. It's smart, it's Josh. Smart. Uh, I think the Admech are definitely going to have a, a bit of a leg up here now that they're going first. But um, oh, oh sorry, sorry. Deeply say that if those walkers get into those bikes, that'll be that'll be bad news bears for the Necrons. One of those Doomsday Arcs goes down, it'll be hard for the Necrons to to use their cool little here. strap that does the mortal wounds. Lucky sees. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. That was that's definitely gonna. Be the theme of this game. I think so I lost like a half Let's, inch let's buckle around. in here. Let's see so. how this goes. All right. So, chat, you if you were the Necrons, or uh, if you were the Necrons, what would you want to kill first? And if you were the Admech, what would you want to kill first? 
Uh, I think uh, definitely the the walkers need to go if you're Necrons. I think the uh, if you're the Admech, I would probably go with the planes first. The the Doomsday Arcs might not necessarily, uh, or what are they called? Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the ships. What are the Arcs? Doomsday Arcs. Doomsday Arcs. They can roll low. So uh, they are probably lower in my target priority. I'd probably go after those planes quick because of the mortal output. Um, I'll... Bizarre 40KB oh, says the flyers um, gotta go. Take, Isante uh, feels that uh, uh, the take... Necrons deployed badly against the chicken, the little chicken walkers. Um, you know, death and any any screening with the a unit that flies, it's not unusual to screen. Um, those uh, bikes I'll also take, have uh, a minus one to be hit inherently. One. Um, which is not too uh, bad. And we'll start my turn. This whole army's in cover um, makes uh, the small arm fire relatively ineffective. It's really going to come right. down to what the Castlin does on the first turn, in my opinion. If the Castlin just goes ham and Monday monkey, stuff, guys, thanks we'll, uh, for subscribing or following. For the six for their movement sorry, sorry. Base. No. Yep. That's all just, good, man. Just under ten inches. <clears throat> the Tau of Tau. Of you have to kill yeah. one fly to remove a mortal wound strap. There you go. And what's going on right now? Uh, oh, he's, is he using a Vigilus strat to be able to disembark after it moved? Might be going a little too far. No, 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 no I got strat. plenty. Yeah. Joshua strat, or Justin, what strat did you use? He used, uh, I used Stygies twice. Okay. He used uh, cover. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yes. Uh, old Eli Lister, Lee. yes, there's a stop table. Eight inch movement here. How was it? Sorry. These guys move ten. Oh, the drill move was pre-game. <clears throat> oh, that makes sense. Because he's using the. Uh, so he did the pre-game strat, which happens before the. Okay, that that makes sense. And so was the 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 um. So was the chicken water strats. They get to pre-game move as well. So he's definitely gonna be in there. This is definitely. Bad news for the Necron player for sure. <clears throat> Bulgan will advance. Boy, well, Santi just kind of added seven. the movement together. I don't think it's a big deal. He just moved up from the transport. Bottom floor. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so Stygis moved um, before the game started, and now the game starts, and he's able to disembark. I don't think he's going to be able move. He'll be back. So he's in. Psyker, advance. Phase. 11. Deploy really aggressively up, so he's gonna have to withstand. I feel like that means that the the jet bikes are gonna all die. Uh, the electro priests, if they kill something, or you know, they'll they'll get okay. the uh, the three up involve, which will be good to go. Um, you know, <clears throat> advance here. Okay. Isante, it was smashed next to a building, but they're infantry, so they can move through ruin like walls and stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter. They just they can be in the middle of a wall. As per ITC, towards the objective to get two plus plus. So they have a strat that gives them plus next to an objective. That's pretty cool. An extra come uh, involve save. That's neat. Turn. Oh, definitely coming up to. A good amount Turn. of views, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot so for back. all the comments. This is yeah. fun. I hope you guys have been enjoying the weekend. Thanks Believe for the I Iron yep. TV for setting this up. You're welcome. <laughs> Scary has a Twitch channel. You want to shout out your Twitch channel, Scary? My Twitch channel is Godcast. That's yes. right. We do a daily live sit and Guardsman paint. Advance every day at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I do a live um, just sit and chat every Sunday night, which I'll be tonight at. I've already declared it. They're not going to be able to do anything Eastern anyway, Standard so I'm just going to... So nine... I didn't really want to, but we'll end of the world. move okay. them up a bit. <laughs> so go, uh, go check out Scott. They're not going to be able to do anything anyway. But... Uh, also, if you're a podcast listener, I am on the Flying Monkeys Wargaming podcast. Uh, but this one mortar, now that he advanced, cannot shoot. Uh, go give it a listen. That gets me every time. Good. Good. Just go listen. <laughs> uh, so it seems like the guard at Admech it's player is available. definitely very aggressive. He knows he can't sit back. He has to press the advantage. You know, even the Castlin is moving into a middle board 
presence mm. to really kind of threaten with his close combat ability. Not something you do very often with a Castlin, but in this situation, getting that Castlin in the middle of the board to support the Bulgrin means that the Necron player is going to have a hard time to come back from this first turn. And we forgot to choose the primary primary objective to move. If you want to do Necron that, I'm happy to, or we can just leave it out. Not. Is. He, um, Perfect, me too. He That's can fine. Kind of make something of this. Uh, what's that? For the. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. It's a test, little, test, uh, test. I can. Test, test. The, no? the players mic'd up, ready to test them. We gotta declare which one is priority for the. Okay, I'm just so gonna do this one. I'll do, um. So, chat. I'll do this one right here. Seized on plus Kretschelin. Good, <laughs> good game. Okay. Grex, I don't believe it's, the, it's called uh, Kretschelin. I think it's just the stratagems that make the Castlin way too good. If the Castlin oh, was too uh, good, engine serial well, advance. you'd see it in every Chaos list as well. But by itself, it's not bad of a unit. I think it's yep. the stratagems that make it crazy good. Yoshi! What's going on, Yoshi? Yes, it, it is, is top, top table. table. And Scarry makes a, a great point that if the Castellan by itself was such an amazing thing, you would see it on every chaos list. Uh, exactly. Just as a standalone. Castlin, they can take one. You rarely see it. Yeah, so, you know, they have they have access to the same stuff. You do uh, yeah. Renegade Guard or Chief oh, right. Uh So they have, uh, you know, ch Chief Screening yep. Troops out there. It's just the Castellan without the, the strats. Is uh, is not the not the animal it is by itself. Agreed. Okay. But uh, you know, in this in this matchup, the castle isn't as good as it could be. The, uh, um, color, there's red, however, uh, the gold, the little chicken and, walkers uh, and the here. priests in the drill are definitely going to be the MVPs in my opinion. Just putting that pressure on, you know, it's going to be crazy. Non Raven Castellan twice worst games of my life. <laughs> right, <laughs> Raven Castellan is definitely <laughs> that Raven house Raven strat. Right you know, I think that should That's almost fine. be. Uh, you yeah. know, they raised it one CP from two to three. Uh, I almost think that sucker should be four because you're not Nine, just rerolling ones on misses. You're rerolling all ones in the shooting phase. It is crazy how much that stratagem no minuses to hit. increases so fours, the, the, all the, uh, of the, uh, the, the damage order. output of a Castlin. Like, it, it is it is incredible. Cadian stratagem comes Cadians, out. Yes, okay, that's fine. Yes, yes, sir. Quickly, all right. Playing my, my Drukhari. And we are going to be wounded on fours. Yep. I was curious how like three, uh, you know, your Jukari having Black Heart, uh, Vect, and uh, Gene Stealers having roll, almost roll. The exactly go. worded Vect, uh, how they were going to handle that okay. without raising the CP on it. Probably and it looks like they made theirs one per here. game. Uh, what's your opinion on that, Scarry? I love the fact that I can use it more than once per game. If I need to use it twice per game, it's just Seven, so much ten, better than just ten. being able to use it once. I don't care if it's on, it's four CPs. Yeah. You know, if I really need it twice a game, I'll save the eight CPs ready to use it twice a game. Yeah. Um, and sometimes just being able to say no to an two. opponent's yeah. stratagem in two Come different turns up. or in two uh, different phases, stuff, you know, it can stuff. just completely okay, take the wind out of your opponent's shoot. sails. Yeah. Uh, zero charisma. Uh, I tend to agree with you. I think that uh, I wish buffs were more in uh, in uh, plus ones or minus ones as opposed to just giving complete rerolls. I think that would speed up the game a lot more. So we're gonna put overcharged plaz into this. Yeah, the rerolls are. I I don't have an issue with rerolls. I think that there's other mechanics you can do to kind of simulate rerolls. However, I feel that just take they do take up a lot of time. Yeah, uh, rolling the dice, here, picking them up again, rerolling them again. You one, know, it, and and it kind of does skew the math a lot, which is why the rerolls are in uh, there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we'll put one of the set values. Um, and that should be all the shooting. Major Sigma, there's so, not uh, really rerolls. We'll start here, like the that, like that you class. pay a lot for rerolls. Uh, rerolling ones you know, and they're not something you get very often. Um, but in 40k, it's like, here, have another chance. Hooray. Rolling ones, minus one to hit, right? Yes. So I'll hit. Yep. Um, and three to wound. Three rolling ones. You know, Age of Sigmar is a similar game system. Okay. And there's a lot of stuff that will let you just reroll ones 
you know, but it's not as common as it is in 40k. Not at all. And, uh, and I find it's more refined in terms of the system. I find that the I, I, I do think it's cleaner. More <laughs> yeah, it's definitely cleaner. And there's a lot of less. There's a lot of situations that happen in 40k that you're like, you can do that, and you're like, yeah, you, you can. You can kill all your guys in the middle of your unit and have two separate guys in the same unit holding two different objectives. Yes, of course. In Age of Sigmar, no, nope. no. Yeah, one of those guys has Nobody to go. So. You know, I, I, that's, I love that. Actually, I actually like that mechanic. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll be right back, guys. Okay. We will, um, big guns. We'll tune in to the players for just a little bit. Oh, Wait till Scarry gets back. Fours and twos re-rolling. Minus five. Um, 3d3 damage each. Um, so first one. All right, guys, real quick, I'm going to be back out. Uh, there is a poll. Who do you think is going to win this? Uh, Justin in the Admech or Josh in the Necrons? Go in the poll and vote and let us know what you think. I'm going to lose three. Okay. And then the back guy, three as well. Come on, Red Dice. Hold on a second. You're not in here. Yes, sir. And then three. Okay. All right. Um, I believe they advanced and they moved. No point. Okay. Um, so six CP left. Uh, this guy will. He'll put his two storm bolters here. Okay. I think yeah, rapid fire, and then the um big gun there. So uh, what's the stats of that big gun for that? It's a D three melted gun. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, three's to hit. Yep. He's got five units, or three units of five rangers. And, uh, four's to move. Uh, Just one. Uh, three no units of infantry at 30. If, uh, Reaper's one 20 models, hit. I don't hit. think he has enough to give up Max Reaper. It's a one, does not wound him. Maybe count the mortars. Hmm. Good, 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 good. Shot, shot. Can't shoot. Can't shoot. Can't shoot. Shot, shot. Or can't shoot. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, Jason needs to update the secondaries. Uh, we'll go with the drill uh, disregard what you see on the screen. We'll go He's been using a different overlay. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Two blades. So this will be 18. I need uh, to do 36 total. Okay. Do that twice. Yep. Okay. <laughs> one, two... So far. Do you get to reroll for any? Uh uh. Okay. But those do explode, so that's two so far. Two so far. There's Three, a little four, bit. five. There we go, so that's better. So that's six. Eight total. Eight. Because of the plus two. Sixteen, so two. Four. Oh, you're right, yeah, doubles. Well, four more for rolling wounds after this. Uh, T, uh, T8. Okay, so I need uh, five. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go more right here. Yeah, just Jason, that number. Get that's five. Shit together. Yep. AP? But nothing. Okay, so it's going to be a three up save. Uh, two damage. So he'll okay. go down to eight. His charge distance is a whopping 11. Not that that's going to matter. We're just going to go right in here so you can't Overwatch anymore. If you're just now tuning in, uh, Justin Lewis versus uh, Josh Stewart. This Are we is the top nine table here? at the Desperate okay. Allies GT here in Arkansas. Josh is running the Necrons, and uh, Justin Lewis is running uh, Imperial Soup with a big Admech, uh, uh, Astra Militarum, and the, the Boogeyman, the Castellan. State of the board, Josh has lost one of his uh, flyers. So there's no, there's not going to be any uh, crescent rolls dishing out mortals. And uh, Justin, here. Josh did win the roll to go first. And Justin seized on him, um, and, uh, and that's where we're at right now. Well. We're getting into doing charges and the five phase. Up here, so you on here. Yeah, up here to yeah, yeah. Just making sure there wasn't another squad that was close by. So I'm gonna stay outside of one at the be at the beginning. Okay. What is up, Scary? What? One. This is Hill, oh, so we can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the mm -hmm. patient, Gary. Patience. Just uh, just FYI, we've lost one of the the crescent rolls. Mm -hmm. 
One of the what's now? <laughs> one of the the dude oh, skis, the, the flyers. Oh, okay. The, the croissant uh, flyers. I'll pop one CP. Okay. Oh, no, I already got mine lost, back. Uh, They're gonna get plus two to hit. Sure. On we will start with. Um, oh, before I do that, um, at the end of their charge phase, I'm happy to show it to you. On they the, got some what you look at doing? It's the mortal wounds after they okay. charge. Okay, and then that okay. drill, so those priests, I have 11, and I'm gonna roll 11 the dice and any sixes chicken are mortal wounds. have jumped into the bikes. It's gonna be nasty. Nothing. Okay. Yeah, well, one if only the did only one of the chicken, okay. uh, the we'll one of the flies go down. First. Yes, just one. I think that's probably okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's probably the best. I, I, that's not bad then. Uh, I, no I feel here, like so we, the Admech player played it right yeah. though by um, focusing one on one of the flyers one instead there. of trying to kill two of them. Because then he probably wouldn't have been able to so kill. So we we'll get eighteen of attacks them. to begin with. Okay. So good on him for eighteen attacks, plus two, so they hit on threes Using normally. They hit on ones. Ones always fail. So twos. But Yep. yep. Just like Tesla. And I'm gonna reroll ones because mechanical. Yep. So ones here, twos hit, but they don't get the reroll. So we'll get not a ton. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve you have extras. To deploy for the back to, yeah, you have to deploy for the back to, to stop that turn one charge. You know, you I, it, especially in competitive play, it's okay to go. Strength first, eight to five, right? To go so gonna be three usually more powerful. Not too good. Uh, how do you want to play? Yoshi, I agree. Do you, I mean, if you, to me, it's like, since oh, it's a one, I'm not going to reroll it. But for future, just because I know it's a one now, mortals. anything what that's not flat, I won't. Easy, I'm going to reroll. I'm not going to reroll this one because I've seen it already. The full guide priest. No worries. Uh, They're the ones with the plus um, two. Or strength. do you mind if I four up it to reroll it? Uh, I can't just make. Reroll it. I'm Are you sure? One hundred percent. So the three. Okay. Okay. Negative two. So they become strength five. Or? Yes. Nine, twelve, fifteen, right. eighteen minus ones, two Well, those eight. bikes definitely 12, don't have an invulnerable save in close 15, combat, so. Sixteen, how much did you say it was? Uh, eighteen, I believe. So I gotta roll two more dice after this, and I need fours. Uh, minus one, I can yes, see that fours. being a bit of an issue. <laughs> so, yes. so for one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, and I gotta roll four more. Uh, two more threes right there. Little did we know okay. the Necrons would be at charged yeah, by the ad mech um, being like, there. Where's and our technology? Ah. <laughs> uh, two more. So ten moves total. Tesla, uh, Tesla, two Tesla. Okay. So that'll be the whole squad. Okay. Use. Jacques. So we did we hear the players? Are they yeah. being are the players being nice and civil to each other today? They are. Yeah. Very good. That's always best. There we go. A little competitive. Josh ones. is actual. He's a buddy of mine. I'll finish my piling. He plays. Uh, he is one of the guys down here. Desperate the allies out of Arkansas. Josh uh, bases out of Louisiana. Uh, okay. uh, he's been playing quite a while. Plays uh, since um, third edition. Interrupting. Uh, Josh used to fight MMA. Mind. And uh, so I'm gonna do jiu-jitsu. Okay. So I'm gonna move my first three. He's, he's, so he's, 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 he's he, he right. targets for his anger. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's also a veteran. Fantastic. He is. I like the guy. Model. Him and I have a lot in common. Right. He said his his uh, highlight for the Eight tournament, he got to play orcs, and uh, it was a pretty tense game. But uh, once he killed all the Ludas, that was kind of his favorite moment for the tournament so far. And basically, those Ludas are scary. He wanted to come and show everybody that Necrons could win games. And I think even if he walks out of here at 4-1, uh, that's a respectable outing. I think that he's definitely proven that Necrons can win games. Yep. We can argue that point. If you go if you go this far in an event with such a like a good playing field and top players and top lists, you know that it, it says something not only about you as a player but as uh, about the book that you are playing. Right. So good on him. Good point. Good so on only him. Is, can and that those that know, uh, Justin uh, finished in the top eight at LVO. He is uh, reasonably new to the 40k scene compared to some, but. Seems to be adept at picking it up and finishing high. Yeah. 
if you want to make it to the top. Actually, it was nice. I got to meet him at LVO. Yeah, he's uh. Um, he was really he was really excited about how he did. Yeah, he he. he I talked to him a little bit about it here, and uh, he was pretty proud of his finish. Talked to him a little bit about his list. Thought it was a pretty neat approach. Uh, he did play a Gene Stitter Colt list that was doing pretty well until it ran into him and he got to talk a little tactics with it. He knows the game. He has been banned from an event for his behavior, but uh, I think he's trying to make a change to that. The Admet guy? Or the the, yeah, the Admet guy. I was, I was paying attention to the chat there. Oh, okay. You have to give people the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I agree. But... Alright, I just want to say that uh, some guy is not salty. Yeah. Asante13, it's okay. Um, I would agree with uh, Scary on this. Uh, I think uh, we do have to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but with stipulations, so it's not a big deal. And, uh, you know, the cool thing is, is if he cheats on stream, then, you know, it's recorded to the end of time, and he'll be known equivalent to Alex Harrison. So are we in the uh, the bottom of the uh, turn, or the top of the turn, and just finishing up one their squad, two, uh, three, charge four, phase here? Um, hold one, kill one. Uh, that is vote. correct. They Your are turn, scoring hey, right now. Hey, I'm gonna do my will be done. There's only uh, one done. fire done. left. Search for reanimation. Yes, sir. Seems uh, like the bike's done. Um, Red squad. Oh yes. Hey, yes zero. Yes, yes, Just yes. ask your question. Uh, Don't ask there, to ask battle. the question. Yes. Bring that up to ten. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> By the way, we only listen to questions of people who've subbed to the channel. Oh. Click that sub button. Guys, don't don't be shy, you know. Advancing the crypto. You got a Twitch Prime account. Fourteen. Oh, guys, over here. Yoshi is watching like a hawk. Bring him up to here. Yoshi is also it's known as the back. internet uh, troll. He is uh, hey. Diogo Peter. You all love him and know him. Uh, um, any and all internet um, argument um, ever made in the sands of time. So, you got to love him. I'm glad that he's watching. This guy here in Zero. The is going to... Never give up. Never surrender. Sometimes you just got to find your reason for playing. Here. If uh, I have had some terrible um, ta tournament outings, I've had some days where I can't lose. Uh, you just have rotate. to go back to the drawing board and keep going. <laughs> and you should always have fun. If you're not having fun, take a break. Here. It's one of the reasons why when folks ask me, what should I collect or what should I buy? I always go, go for what you like and what you think is cool. Because yep. at the end of the day, you know, when well. push comes um, to shove and you do feel a bit of hobby burnout, it's a lot easier to fall back on something that you enjoy doing rather fail. than something that you did just because you wanted here. to win. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and what I have been doing lately is when I get a little 40k burnout, uh, I've been going and diving into a little bit of H Sigma, okay, so and uh, I tend to enjoy it. It's pretty much the same system. Uh, like Scarry said earlier, it does come across as a little bit more streamlined and clean, and so I'll play a little H Sigma and get me some tabletop uh, fun I'll that way, and then I'll miss 40k and then go play some 40k games. Yeah, and then we all have to have our own. Like, all right. We'll keep those guys there. Like hobby um, burnout. Um, you, you know, we do play and spend a lot of time painting cover? and hobbying uh, and playing games with friends and yeah. right. rolling yeah. dice and Bob stuff. Bob Goblin Gaming, thanks for uh, following the channel. Go ahead, Scarry, keep talking. That's all good. So let's do um... my train of thought now, thank you. Yeah. Alright, my thoughts. Uh, Asante13 uh, about the uh, new sexy space rain right. units. Pick Dude, I think that those are actually going to be usable um, on the tabletop, I'm depending on their this. points. Um, bottom guy. Okay. I think the yeah. the being able to deploy in no and man's land and off, keep a 12 inch bubble point. away from you, and uh, the not. sniper Bring rifles are pretty damn cool. Okay. I am yeah. looking forward to getting so that box set and actually two, having some yeah. usable space range. So, Asante, you know, I was 
I've been excited about that new, new and then anybody with them six like, of them them up in Vegas. I have a couple of friends that play hard primaris money lists. This is these these units are going to add a whole variety of tactical flexibility to any like marine list, and I'm really pumped to see them on the board. I also think that you're going to start seeing a lot of GSDR bolts. So having the ability to do with characters um, is going to be uh, a pretty essential part of a lot uh, of this. Here, and these guys uh, look like they're bringing that to the table uh, for Stalin. a lot of Imperium and Space Marine Army. From, uh, also, their uh, you know deep, deep strike denial bubbles I think will come in handy. Yes. Not only against not only against uh, you know uh, Gene Steel Cup, but also against a variety of different armies like Chaos and things like that that rely on to not getting be Zango able to come in. right in your face or you know. Um, Getting those uh, like that that like blood letter bomb in your face, you know. They're gonna be great screening units if used right. So, the as a chaos player, I'm a little salty about the chaos side of that box set. I'm hoping that maybe I'm just missing something completely. Okay. Uh, it is nice that yep. the blue raiders get more shots, but uh, uh, other than that, the rest 24. of the chaos stuff seems very very lackluster. I think it's also because we just have this like he can see him. Uh, okay, preconceived yeah. so notion two of the like, destruction. Of yeah, simply yeah, the rob. Thanks for the follow. Uh, you get go. one back. I got you. So update. down to six. No update. So. Uh, I lose. I lose one. You can only regain one. Is two command points for that. So I'm down. Gotcha. I'm down okay. to six. Got you. Thanks. Sorry about that's that. That's all right. We'll um, Tesla. I mean, uh, golf shots. Oh, oh, shoot the. Over time. The, yeah. You declared right here. Yeah. But I think you should go into it with an open mind. Or this should be twenty. Those models look really cool. If yeah, those models aren't really yeah. as effective, right, they're all 100% no, it's, it's, uh, new sculpts. Or red dots. Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect GW to abandon that uh, in thank terms you. of rules. Uh, there we go. Sorry. Nice. Yep. You know what I went into with an open mind? That One space wolf's code. Yep. And fives. Mm, yes, well. and, and Games Workshop broke my heart. Uh, looks like uh, three, four. four. Uh, here. Yeah. AP. Uh, minus one. So five the up. Moon. <laughs> they kind of gave you a good, they gave okay, you a good so excuse to howl at the moon, then. Yeah, they did. No, why? And, uh, hey, here's, here's this new book. Go print your warlord traits out, Paul. Right, so uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Two, four, <laughs> that was the first. Let's see what we got. Uh, three. three hits. Real quick. Oh, well, we messed that up. Three wounds. Perfect. Yes, you did. Uh, yes, will... you did. Thank you very much. So one goes huh? through. Okay. Said so GW messed that up because they. Oh no! I started. Jason was touching my face and grabbing my mic, and I was okay. uncomfortable. And I was about to ask for a the other guys. <laughs> to call HR to you. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Four, Space Wolves minutes. got figuratively tri pointed with that codex. The Tau of Tau, I don't think a true statement has been made. Okay, here we go. And... Try point of A, that's that's like yeah. a low blow from a Tau player. Uh, it is. Uh, I guess yep. you don't like getting yep. tri pointed. <laughs> thing that could happen to you. That sounds like something you ask your girlfriend to do on a freaky night. Um, that's right. That's hey, 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 darling, do you want to try point me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we hope no kids are listening at home. But if they, uh, if they do, ask your parents all about being tri pointed. So do remember, we've got you know the uh, the, the every archon wa listening and watching. So they they're going to be grading everybody's level of depravity. Sweet. So far, we are winning. This is how you got sucked in the niche in the first place, isn't it? Hey, um, I cannot I confirm nor deny these allegations. I think I'm gonna be just outside. Eight. I'm gonna be in eight, I think. Yeah, do go ahead and measure and see because you got a little bit better of an angle. Oh yeah, you're okay. Here. Seems so like um, first. you know, the uh, Necrons two, are gonna be you, well, the secondary. So Necrons have Kingslayer, shots, old school two. Butcher's Bill. So he has to try and kill something. You know, yeah. unless he's killing a unit of guard uh, guardsmen, he's not like I don't. I, I don't know. Okay. Do you think he'll um, be able to kill? Like he has to kill those those this chicken walkers. Um, I, uh, his lines be, uh, I think that turn yeah. one yeah, the was pretty much the, the the seal on the deal. To be honest. One shot. 
You think he just he just sucker punched him that hard? He's not gonna be able to come back. Uh, maybe I've been wrong before. I've been wrong lots of times in my life. I was married once. Sure did. That does hit. Well, in the first round, we did have the like we did have it be a lot closer than we thought it was. Either way, though, I did forget about that though. That was, uh, after there was a season that game too. Yes, yes. Yes. Got it. Um, my fault. I thought it was too. No, that's just. I think that's assassins are going to be a thing too. Um, I I do think the assassins, uh, in part need to be an answer yeah, for overpowered, uh, pointy ear um, psychic powers. I'll be in range for those guys, but I'll be at minus one. And uh, Gene Stealer Colts yep. psychic okay. powers. So, uh, heat guns. Yeah, go I agree as well. Way, or death rays gonna go that way. Big I mean, guns. Yeah, big guns. Sure. And the little one's gonna go at that squad. And if you have so not, go. Uh, go vote who's gonna win the game. So far, it's 67 percent to 33 percent. Uh, Admech uh, coming in as a favorite. I could see why the odds would favor the Admech. You know, top eight player of the of the LDO. It is not an uneducated guess. explosions. That Caesar's uh, you know, couldn't have crucial a better time for him. And oh yeah. yeah. I do look forward to. Uh, uh, I saw uh, no some mind. of the beta missions from IDC, okay. uh, changing the deployments up to using the chapter approved deployment um, and half the missions. I, I'm actually looking forward to that, seeing it, uh, giving people the option to go first or not to go Over first. Uh, might mix up the meta a little bit. I I I'm a big half fan half, of that style of deployment. I'll go on record and say that. So Are you? Again, the I've right. never played it, but I like how it looks on paper. I feel that, you know, if you are deploying, if you know whether or not you are probably going to be told to go first or second or whatnot, I think that that has a huge impact on you deploy and how you play the game. I feel it really mitigates the whole, oh, I'm going to roll to go first and just completely destroy your army. Yes. I still think elves have the freaking advantage, though, with things like Phantasm. <laughs> Uh, very much so. Yeah. Anything that allows you to redeploy, even like Necrons with the Deceiver, you know. That's true. Like those those things just really come into their own in that sort of uh, scenario. Even like Dark Eldar who have, they also have a redeployment strat, but you never see it because nobody uses Poison Tongue very often. Right. Is that a, is that a, I don't know what they call the... This does not have cabal, it's Cabal's, right? Is that Cabal specific, or is that a... Uh, yeah, it's a Cabal specific for the Cabal of the Poison Tongue. Okay. okay so I got, but it's, uh, uh, you have 2 CP, and shots. you get to redeploy three things, the same as Phantasm. Uh, okay. You know, I've used it to great effect uh, using, uh, like, my Ravagers as Poison Tongue, or using the Raiders that I put all my Assault be, Units in as Poison Tongue. Because then I can know if I'm going first or second, and then redeploy accordingly. I, I think it. There's a unit of uh, rangers that went away. I think. All right. Um, assault phase. I'm gonna charge. Um. Is what sorry? Uh, I think pretty soon you can see some rangers uh, go away. We have some lag on the video end here, guys. We apologize. Best time to roll snake. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he's gonna swing first. See what we got. Hitting on twos. What's that, Jason? I'll use his ability. Sure. Game Do you guys want to go over the list three. real quick? We had a request from uh, yeah, Twiggy. Now the scar is back. Let's uh, look at the list. I'm going to. Let's do it. Get the Necron. The Necron list right here. So that'll be that. So three at minus three. Uh, five up in board. Yeah, Ven Ven Carell, uh, Harley's can redeploy one unit uh, for Ten. one CP, which is also very very powerful. So having the ability to redeploy almost your entire army right. can be a huge advantage in a competitive yeah, setting. Sometimes got, even more uh, than one, having. Two, three, looks like this swing. is the bottom of they turn one. Nottle, so okay. Nottle Devil. <laughs> okay, so no, let's take a look. Is what I think it's supposed to say. T Devil. Oh, I see. It's a play on okay. words, is it? Naughty Devil. I swing back. Uh, yep. It's a fancy name. For a devil. Hey, let's take a look at these lists. There we go. 
Now, did uh, did he change his list from what he took to the LVO, yeah. or was it is he basically bringing this exact same list? Everybody I do not there. recall. Okay. Three, seven, ten, fourteen. Is you know, I think, Scurry, I think that uh, Justin had. Uh, I don't think he had an ad mech. Because I know I remember he, he had Cataphon Destroyers at LPO. Yeah, he had the ad mechs done. No, he had, he had mean, the drill and the and the, the chicken walkers. I'm pretty sure. All right, sure. ATC so, oh, Killer list. says it was no same list. No, he doesn't. Yeah. I don't, excuse me. I don't think he had the guard detachment at LBO. Uh, I believe six. With Bulgren. Did you remember seeing Bulgren at LBO? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two guys under there and the rest are gonna go to. He didn't have Wolverines, Asante says. Yeah. I really like Wolverines because they're super durable. They're a counter assault unit. You can give them a one up save with some psychic powers. They're super powerful. And they can sit in the middle of the board and dominate it. One goes through, so I take one wound. It's D3. Do you have a pain? No, I do not. These okay. are actually okay. are really okay. good, especially three, if you are running the Morphers, just for the um, for so the reroll or misses, so as well as the, the relic, the Voskadia relic, if you need that. One. Mm. And they also get the plus one to three hit to strat. The, uh, so you can Warlord. get a wound in hit, to a unit, and then one. get plus one to hit on all those two Mortars that are rerolling hits. Which can be really nasty. It's just very, very reliable uh, way of getting a lot of hits. Minus two and one D3 wound. Mortal wound. I just make that one. Okay, so mortals, one, one. and this one, three. Um, okay. ATC Killer six. says me and him yeah. did consider um, changing around the Bulgrin shields uh, to different kinds of shields. And reroll the mortal wound one. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Bulgrin uh, are fantastic. Four, four I feel that like they're, so they're a mainstay unit. And, and he's only running a small unit of like okay. five of them, I think. And I don't think you need more than that. Like, yeah. I run... I run six to seven uh, grotesques in my list, no. and I don't feel I need they more. Some people run like 18 grotesques. Eight, I'm like, I feel six, one, you're just putting too nope. much stock okay. in a few things. Uh, and and I think nine, if you mix slab yeah, shields and the unbolt shields uh, in them, uh, uh, you I really don't need much else. Uh, yeah, six will make me run. Exactly. You know, All right, uh, I you have can really pulled up uh, Justin's list from LVO. He had a battalion of... Uh, Engineer, Engineer, Ranger, Ranger, Rangers, Electro Priests, Dragoons, Termite Assault Drill, in the, uh, he had Cadians, Company Commander, Primary Psyker, Infantry, 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 Bulgrins, three different heavy weapons, and the Castellan. I think it's pretty close to the same list he's running today. Yeah, it definitely looks pretty similar. Okay, my turn? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take plus one strength for my mechanical. Okay. Um, this guy... <laughs> I'm continuing to work on Logan some witches. Will... I got uh, 20 of them built, and now Just I'm out. Um, 15 of them. Nice. So you're almost there. Your home different. stretch. Well, I have I have 20 built and painted. I have another 15 that are sort of painted, built that I'm putting some more paint on today, and then I have another 25 to be working on. So I'm looking at running six, uh, 60, 60 witches. Mm -hmm. What they do, they're awesome. Don't underestimate the witches. I've dated a couple. A couple of witches? Yeah. Well, you know, you should document your journeys so that folks don't make the same mistakes you did. Oh, I've, I've talked about it on the podcast. Give me a give me a whiskey or two. I'll, I'll document so. all you want. Van Krell, I agree. Which is a great. <laughs> I'm running them right now. Is <laughs> said uh, said Tony the Tiger. <laughs> I'm running them right now as Cult of the Cursed Blades or Cult of Strife, normally for the, just a million attacks. 
Uh, but I do like the strength four on them. So Cult of the Cursed Blade has been a uh, almost go-to. Mm. And then the uh, basically being immune to morale is a bonus. Uh, psychic. Ooh, let me make sure that I'm not missing anything. So we have a uh, score update, uh, Scary. It is eight to five with Justin in the lead. Um, okay, so we are able to. He was able to get five points in his round, so he's. He, it's not completely over for the Necrons. He got four he secondary points and one primary point. Are you guys running the new okay, secondaries uh, for this event? No, like unfortunately not. Um, he's gonna heal. Actually, I play with him the other night. Movement. I think that, 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 that I really yeah, like the new gang. He's gonna busters. heal him one wound. Up to twenty one. So for anybody who um, isn't following, you know, the updates, phase, plus one, new gang uh, busters here on the is, goes off um, the you get one point for every here. six and wounds done to a unit uh, that phase. has models of three or more wounds. Worth it to spend three. So okay. it's kind of cool, um, actually. We'll start the enemy here. has like lots Tim. of big units that have like big tough to units, like grotesques, or even uh, these uh, doom crawler okay, things, the, the chicken walkers. Here. You can Tim. usually max and, uh, it out because we'll you have to deal with them anyway. Well. And it's not per model; it's per Tim. amount of wounds Eight done. So that's cool. are hitting on fours now. And for those who don't know, we're joking. Uh, the Four, dragons three. are what we're affectionately calling chicken walkers. Chicken walkers. Yeah. Lose two. Down to one. D3 melt gun. You know, if you've been far away from yep. the 40k lane go this one entire hit. season. Two. <laughs> I think the Castellan should be called the yep. Boogeyman. The Boogeyman? The Boogeyman. Castellan will shoot. Um, I think I'm inside I mean, 12, we right? could make that a trend. Chance, yeah. do you hear that? We're yeah. just going to okay. be calling it uh, the Boogeyman guns there. from now on. We'll shoot the four D3 gun there. He'll so I feel the like the there. the other Necron flyer is probably going to be uh, dead. We'll shoot the last the Boogeyman. And the big gun. <laughs> Good. My man. So, the, um, and, uh, and after that, three. we've got the the, uh, the rest of the two. chicken walkers kind of really Dead. pressing Dead. into the uh, uh, three, Necron the, line. Uh, plasma. So um, we won't overcharge. Have Five shots. Two turns to make something happen and to turn the tide in this yeah. game. The someone made a uh, mention in the chat. Um, I'm gonna say correct. I think. Mm -hmm. New gangbusters uh, punishes destroyers and raids yep. ridiculously hard. Yeah, I think some of the new beta missions are a little odd. I'm not sure anybody's gonna pick engineers, uh, you know, unless you have like a bunch of nerdlings or ripper swarms or what are the Necron swarms? Um, scarabs. Scarabs. You know, I think those are gonna be army specific. If you got certain types of units that can go there and do nothing. People will pick engineers. I'll use my grand strategist. I'll use my grand strategist. Reroll. I think engineers will be a good one to help max out your secondaries against armies that you don't really want to move against. Yeah. If you're playing against somebody like Tau or something where you really don't want to like get in their face, you can just sit back and like farm secondary points. Yeah. With a and group of engineers. I think you can max that out in two turns if I read that right. Nine. You get two engineer uh, units, and then gonna each be to engineer team, it doesn't matter who blows up or not. score points <laughs> okay. from yeah. one objective. So go. it's a it's How a very fun. it's a very easy okay. one to get, and I feel like it's a ground control one, which uh, which will really right. help armies that and like have a hard time against people who build their lists specifically to deny secondaries. So the game becomes less about just building your list to deny secondaries to just pick the right ones for that <laughs> particular matchup. Um, I like, I like, I like, I like the heroic intervention. Thanks for the follow. Hey, Scar, when I do that, just keep talking, homie. I'm just giving the thanks for the follow. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Got to, we've got to say thanks to the folks following at home. Nova uses it and it's popular. Yeah, yeah, Nova does use it. They're, it's a little different, I think, in the Nova format. But, but uh, you know, all the big tournaments, you know, have been kind of feeding off of each other and yep. taking ideas and feedback and seeing what works one, and what doesn't two, work. And three, that's clearly four. one that seems to do okay. So, one of our, our friends, yep. Dave Armand, who uh, runs the uh, Renegade Open, uh, three, they used one, to have one, their own set there. of Renegade yep. missions. They've decided they're just going to go with Nova shot. missions this year. Yep. Uh, or Adepticon. What's that? Adepticon missions, is it? I just spoke. 
But David's comment whenever we were talking about it was, uh, you know what, everybody just rips off everybody's ideas anyway, so might as well go with it. Yeah, yeah, and and, and honestly, it's um, better for combat, everybody if um, most of the big tournaments kind of start uh, using the same format anyway, and, uh, because it makes it easier for it in translation. Uh, you know, you can travel right, from we'll first, we'll here, halfway across the world, and as long as the mission format is the same, good. right? You know what you're doing. Dang. Yeah, hey, uh, Heroic Convention, so what's happening? Uh, yeah, you're on the Scarry from Scarry so Clan. Uh, okay. You're going to have to say it, man. So we'll do these guys first. Scott Gast. <laughs> Scott <Scarred> Gast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bam from the Flying Monkeys yeah. Wargaming. And uh, Jason from Iron Halo. And uh, we are the final game okay. of the, uh, or the top table of the final round of Desperate Allies make sure I didn't GT. Lose any of those guys, just making sure. What's that? Uh, just make Gage sure Hunt. Them. What it do, mm -hmm. homie? Here we go. Does your wife actually let you play 40k now? Does she know you're watching this? You gonna be okay? I agree, Grex. I think uh, deployment. Uh, Josh could have screened a little bit better with uh, less valuable units and possibly came away a little bit better on that exchange. Yeah, you know, if you put up like a unit of immortals up front, you know, kind of sacrifice them to the wolves. Yep. And then be able to use your jet bikes later, you know, and, and kind of put them in a more like supporting role because uh, they have speed, they can kind of get to wherever they need to go. Well, if I remember correctly, he had a unit of immortals like back behind the building. And, uh, you know, that, that unit could have been up on the screen as opposed to being, you know, towards the back Here we go. Portals are quite sturdy, you know. They, they have some, they have decent stats, and if, especially if there's a there's a five up invulnerable say no, no, cryptic awesome. around them. Three. You know, they okay. they, they can be hard to shift. Yes, and they do get to come back sometimes. They do, they do. It's always worth you know giving them a chance. The bikes would have been a lot more valuable in this game than the immortals. Absolutely. And they have more movement, so you can actually put them further back and get them where they need to go easier than you can a set of models. Agreed. Well, I must say, you know, Justin's been playing it well. He seems to be running up and kind of doing his proper target priority, and and uh, he's not. These guys, which is super important when you're at a high level competitive event, even if you feel. Okay. You're in the lead in a game, you can't afford to take your foot off. Feel free to really like hammer it home when, when you're in the lead and, and make sure you take away the, the win. Yeah, I think uh, Justin's in a position to just put the hammer down and not let off of it. I feel that's a key aspect of like competitive play. Play like you're losing the whole time, even if even if you're winning, and it'll it'll kind of give you as many points as you can physically get out of a matchup. With no deep strike threats, uh, no flyers on the board, it's probably not going to move ghost arcs very far, very effectively. Uh, Justin's pretty much going to keep his backfield where it's at. And Josh Save shall two. continue to shrink. And you'll need to roll these because they're D three damage, right? These guys are two damage class. They're two damage class, so I'll just roll this real quick. I need to get ones. Mm. Okay. So <laughs> I take uh, eight. Yeah, damage. Josh okay. needs uh, his lucky cigar. Six. Him and I did not sit down and break bread and have cigars last night. That's usually our tournament ritual. Uh, okay. So maybe that's what I'm gonna tell him. He lost his game over. Uh, two. I'm you sorry, didn't. You didn't uh, go through with two, the. Nope basic uh, three, six, ritual on that you guys have been doing okay. for Natural. such a long time together. Six. Absolutely. It goes back Even years. Fours. That is... Uh, I fail. That is like three. The heresy. Okay. You both Go receive attack. a red card for that. <laughs> Tim. Hey, uh, Asante, look forward to seeing you at so Flying Monkey. Five, Come find me. Uh, and uh, let me make sure. we'll hang out a little bit. Captain Woodrow, yes, this is uh, Table 1. Uh... Justin Lewis and uh, Josh Stewart, both players going to this round four and zero at the highest points. Do we have oh, two more undefeated players? 
Okay. Let me go look real quick. Like, is table two, uh, is table two undefeated okay. as well? And Let me double check. Toughness six. Uh, strength 14. Okay, dude. Um, I will... I will pull up my handy dandy BCP app. Not worth it. Okay. Uh, two minus fours, three damage each. Okay. So I need threes or better. Handy dandy best ghost pairings app. Save one. Six. I think Jason was trying to break stuff. I was in fear for my safety for a second. All right, we had Justin okay, so was four no going into this round. That, uh, Josh six, Stewart six, was four yeah. no going into this round. Uh, Aiden Barclay, who we I saw play yesterday, the uh, playing orcs out of Fort Worth, Columbia. He was sitting at third and four zero. Uh, Jason Burrow, who was on the stream the last round with the uh, Death Guard, is also four zero. And then we start, we have one tie. So Colin McDade, who is we'll playing Custodes, uh, he had one tie. And then yep. below that we'll was Nick Anderson with one loss at a Cash okay. Jungle Fires. So, so one, the top four two, three, were all undefeated. Four, on going into on this round. The, uh, so if he doesn't score enough points, we could see and, a uh, strength is normal five, but plus one. Yeah, three. there is a huge yep. points difference, though. Uh, Justin went in this round with 41-37 uh, in the Swiss points. Nothing. Uh, Josh went into this round with 31-34 in the Swiss five, points, seven, and then okay, it drops so down to Aiden at 41-19, and uh, Jason at 41-15. Um, so so uh, Jason and uh, yep. Aiden, um, the, the one of them two would have to have an extremely huge game the, um, uh, to leapfrog over Justin. I just don't see that happening. Six, so threes. Right, makes sense. Two minus two. Because there's a, we're going into this with a, uh, one goes through. at least uh, a 14, 15 point one, differential, uh, oh. and uh, just yeah, so looking to probably pain. max out the points in this game. Uh, I'll spend a CP. Now we've also had uh, uh, you know so frontline gaming and Reese and yep. them come up and okay. essentially say and, uh, that or talk uh, about the one. The, yep. okay. the changes to the scoring uh, format and, and how you know uh, events are going to be scored a little bit there. more in a curve yep. basis rather back. than have like. Uh, yep. On twos. There's going to be a more even spread of points. One. Yep. So I'm excited to see okay. how that kind of pans out at this event. Um, yeah, I am looking forward to seeing uh, your regional here. tournaments yeah. uh, uh, get a little bit more legitimacy or mean a little bit more. You know, because previously uh, you could kind of just one, hit a few of the local one, things one. Yeah, one. Yeah, and then have a good okay. showing at LVO and knock uh, everybody okay. else in the region out of points. And, then one, two, three, four, five. and to see it's not going to be as heavily and weighted. I mean, squad next. Uh, it's nice. I think that's okay. a, a good change. I think it's a step in the right direction uh, to uh, bring one. us all together, running stuff in our uh, okay. our uh, regions. Yeah, it, oh. it helps to incentivize okay. uh, the players. So uh, another recon. I think that's very important. Um, all the flyers for marks. Because um, you incentivize the players one, to to come in and your turn. you know participate okay. instead of um, kind of getting bummed out because they can't make seven. it to the LVO, for example. Um, my will be done, my will be done. Three, six, so four, four ups, I believe it is. The word, so that, I was, I was Mofo, three. Dino, the they, um, so they, yes, did have enough room, they played uh, pointy go. hammer and anvil. Um, which, um, he heals D3 which back. meant that yes, he could have deployed a lot further so back. So two wounds, up to three, yep. However, okay. he um, didn't. We're gonna move these and guys then out of the pre-game move uh, for the not chicken combat. walkers really got oh, yeah, chicken walkers these guys are. Chin and the drill as well, and that okay. essentially and I can go allowed him to this, get right? yeah, so first turn charges. Yeah, I, yeah, I wasn't able to lock him. It was um, enough to really put a hamper on the. This guy just come back out like a quarter of an inch. Sure, the rest go. of the game for the Necrons. I feel like good target um, Brady killing those flyers quick. Ability for the Necrons to get him. in the backfield. Five to here. Um, yep. Playing the jet bikes early on was huh. uh, something that really okay. turned the tide in the Necrons in the advent Advancing favor. with him. Four, so 14 inches. But now it seems like we're um, on uh, the Necron bottom of turn two. And uh, he's, he seems to have been taking a pounding. He doesn't have very many units left. But we shall see. But it does seem like um, the Admech are coming out on top. I'll do fly, come over to here. Um, <laughs> He's up top. 
cut yeah, off his okay. uh, his express. Uh, shooting. Uh, who's gonna shoot him? Need eight. to beat nine, right or ten? I think he played think uh, okay. around seven point five, so he's well versed. <laughs> Does that matter when you do that, right? The stamina needed <laughs> for a big event. Um, two more to wound. Okay. What kind of answer does Josh have for the knight? I don't um, think he does. <laughs> I love the dude. Uh, but I guess he could lightning bolt him, but I think that's only like a once per game deal with uh, an Ekron character. Yes, one more, but I, that only does like D3 mortals or something. Or something. Yeah. Nothing crazy. The, um, he, he had the tools and the, the, it, with the Doomsday Arcs and the and the um, and the Doom Sides. However, when you're playing against the Castlin, the best choice Leave it alone yeah, sometimes. Yeah. yeah, you want to kill all the supporting units. You know, killing that drill would have been of paramount importance. Kill the, drill. you know, killing the supporting units, they, you minimize their ability to hold objectives to get into yeah. your board edge. And uh, you make that castle and get out of position and play aggressively because, you know, they have to go out and score points at some point. That's right. Yep. Uh, yeah, minus one. Of course. Uh, five, oh, five. Effective, you know. that was it. Call of the Storm. Thanks, uh, GRX. He already used it. Okay. Yes, already used it. Um, cool. This but the Admec going is going for recon, old school, march for death. You know, you want to try and make sure that you kill the moving, the things that can move into position to get recon and stuff like that, right? Yes. But I think gun. we're uh, a day late and a dollar short on that. After getting seized on and smacked it about. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, 100%. There's no, there's no, there's no short answer here. Getting seized on was, uh, was, was, uh, was painful. And all the, uh, pretty much all the, uh, Necron bikes equivalents, I can't remember what they're called. Those are gone. And I feel that, yeah, that was a mistake. You should have uh, placed yeah, them behind me. Yeah, I would have, uh, you should have sacrificed Immortals. That, that was yeah. the way to go. Just in case, right? Just in case he was going, that he was going second. So you can never plan to go first. Like, you can plan, but if you if you put all your eggs in going first, then it, it turns into, did I go first or not? And then it's a 50-50 shot, right? And you lose half the time. I do. I, I, that's one of the, another one of the reasons I'm looking forward to the new deployments with the uh, the beta missions. I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a middle chess match and going first, not going first. Deploying all your army versus not deploying all your army. I think that's going to add a lot to the game. You get your bonuses if you get charged too, right? It's just a strategy each fight. And it also takes the value of the seas a little bit, like it doesn't become as valuable, really. Like it does, but it doesn't. I think if, uh, well, I don't know, I think if you win the choice to go first, and you, you take that heavy bank on, I'm going first this game, and someone seizes on you, it could be a, a moment for dramatic pause. Yeah, I, do. I, I, I think that, I, I agree, I think. Yeah. Scary, uh, Cuddle Bunny is looking for you in the chat. We're up. One more Cuddle through. Bunny. Yeah. He's dead. Scary um, costume, Cuddle Bunny, what's <laughs> going on? Yeah, I am. I'll send it to me. Where do you get it back? <laughs> you should be able to see me in that. Yeah. Dude, uh, Gage, you're missing out on the, the Grey Knight train. Uh, they're not top tier, but they can, they can hold their own at a mill table. I've seen Grey Knights do extremely well. Yeah, well, we have uh, a player, Steven Hetmeyer, who has a, a way of running Grey Knights that he's won a few RTTs doing it. Nice. Uh, I know a local player, his name's Matt. He, uh, he's been, he has been running his Grey Knights for the better part of you know, like 10 months or so. And he's, he's pulled them up to a little bit above a 50% win rate, which is at the high, higher than the average rating. Like the 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 BCP stats and stuff at the moment. All well, considering he's been playing with like one list and he played it over and over and over and he just got really good with it. Yeah. Way to get good with a list. Don't change it. Just play one thing. That has been my issue 
this competitive season. Competitive season. I, uh, I started out with the Alpha Legion. Uh, I had a pretty strong showing. I was in the top ten for a long time. And then uh, GW continued to nerf the Chaos Space Marine book. And I was wandering in the desert looking for armies to play. And you stumbled on? Ah, none. So I, Space I, Wolves. Yeah, well, no. Space Wolves is, uh, I don't know how to explain this. I have to lead in on the, the main chick versus the side chick thing. Uh, Space Wolves have been my main chick uh, since back in second edition. And they, you know, they've been good in some editions, you know, back when Long Bang Spam was a thing. Uh, you know, I played Space Wolves with Thunderwolf Cav and Shield, uh, Storm Shields all through 7th. And 8th uh, edition, they have just not found a place on the tabletop for me. So I've been uh, trying to find a steady side chick. And uh, I thought Chaos was it for a little bit. So this season, though, I've, I've just decided I'm going to dedicate the side chick game to uh, Astra Militarum. And so far, I've got a winning record with them. So hopefully that holds out and keeps going. Nice. You know, although given your history of picking armies and, and what happens to them, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, the army that you're playing right now gets sniffed just because you're playing it. Yeah, don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> so when that happens, Scary, I'm going to here. find you, whether you're in Canada. Yeah. Or... <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Any yeah. of you Astronaut Tower players, you better watch out. <laughs> Karma is coming for you. I, you're gonna you're gonna feel a disturbance in the force. It's gonna be me screaming your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope that so goes up another CP. Oh really? Oh well, thank you. As long as I can use it more than the Jeans to the Cow one, I don't care if it's. The four or five because I can, I have more chances at making my opponent cry. It's great fun. Absolutely. Nothing like rolling that six on Beck, though, huh? Oh my goodness. Almost as good as rolling a one on Beck and having to spend an extra CP to have it go off. Yeah. So what's uh, what's your, what do you think your most uh, feel bads moment with playing Bex has been? Um, as in when Vec just didn't go off when it absolutely happened. No, 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 when your opponent felt the worst. What do you think was the worst incident of... Oh, um... Usually, usually it's, um, I don't think Josh is running a Satan. He is not. No, Satan is list gauge. Um, it's really, it's any time when you back something simple like a reroll. <laughs> those, those are probably, those are probably the worst feelsies badsies. And it, and it could be anything like. Oh, I, you know, and, and every time you play Drukari, your opponent, like, looks at you when they're going to be doing a stratagem. They'll look straight in your face and be like, I want to use this stratagem. And they're just, like, waiting for you to vect it. And you're like, oh, yeah, sure, go ahead. So you're like, I want to use on Wings of Fire with my, and I'm going to use Wings of Fire. And you're like, okay. They're like, oh, okay. And they like they're asking their, for permission. <laughs> it's like, I'm know, the captain now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they put it down. And they spent, the, uh, they go, I'm going to spend CPs to 3d6 charge this. And you're like, okay. They're like, okay. And then they roll, and they roll lower than they're supposed to. And they're like, I'm going to reroll this one. I'm like, vect. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all about Those the build up. Is that what you're favorite. telling me? Yeah. <laughs> you kind of have to let your yeah. opponent waste a few CPs just... before you start vecting like crazy. Yeah. If not, it's just very easy for you to run out of cps before and ha your opponent has a great chance at you know doing some work with a bunch of cps on there so okay so it's a very long story to get to that like specific point hey it's uh it's full space because this game's looking bleak josh is down to one ghost arc for four Okay, down to two guys left. No, 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 that's you. That's oh, that's you. on him? Yeah. Definitely. So he's dead. Okay. Seems like uh, three, six, we're very close there. to tabling at this point. Yeah, it's going to be a short game. Going first was uh, drastically so important. The the phase, and uh, Justin's season on Josh Four, six, eight. combined well, with Josh's the... deployment. I one, it was of, top uh, right of uh, Justin going um, first, it was four, it was simply because it was Justin went two. first, um, but Josh was two. banking on going first. Yeah. 
you know, Scar, we can actually, uh, after this game is over, we can kind of peek around the other top tables and uh, look at those games and maybe get some reactions from our mobile cam. So those of you watching, uh, please continue to watch. And as soon as this game is over, we're going to go visit some other tables. How's that sound? That sounds dull. <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. It sounds amazing. I actually really like that you guys have a whole mobile setup and everything. It's like it's like a professionals up in here or something. Semi pro. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Jason just likes saying semi. Like semi pro. There it is. Okay, three, four, five. Not like that. Wounds. Due to um, well, get you the chat, I'm just a question to everybody in chat. When when uh, when a game 13. goes terribly wrong, okay. yeah. you know, uh, like yeah. what do you do? And the little ones is four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Anybody? When the game does not go your way in the first couple of turns, you know, and and I always like bringing it to one game that I had this summer, which was a. It was a game that I played major i won last summer which was the basement collective open or the basement <laughs> uh, final game of the event the first turn i had my opponent had scored nine points and i had scored uh, one point um, that game uh, yeah 20, I, uh, 23 to 21 or something so what do you guys do mentally to not give up on your game well, I, uh, man, I have had a game where I made someone rage win. Uh, <laughs> rage win? Rage win. I'm not going to name any names because uh, they may or may not be in proximity at this tournament. But last year at this very same tournament here, uh, I brought a Space Wolves army thinking, like, I'm just going to have fun and play five games. And day two, if I haven't been doing well, I'm just going to hop on the stream with Jason and, and shoutcast games. So uh, on accident, I won first game and thought, like, okay, I'm not going to be a loser all weekend. And in uh, game two, I got matched up with Yanari. And uh, I put my models down, shook his hand, and uh, he got turn one and proceeded to kill 1,038 points of my army, of my 2,000-point army. And uh, it came back to my turn, and I went, you know what, man? You win. And he looked at me, and he goes, what? And I said, dude, you win. Like, you've got this. You killed 1,038 of my army. Uh, you win. Good job. And he's like, well, I'm not going to max points now. I was like, yeah, you won, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm just not going to pick up models while you kill more of them. And uh, he looked at me, and he screamed, Judge! And so the judges came over thinking, like, uh, something was really wrong and asked me what's going on. I was like, I'm fine. I'm just, he wins. And uh, the guy was mad because he wasn't going to get max points on his primaries. And uh, the judges were like, well, I can't make him finish the game. <laughs> so uh, he was pretty upset with me and uh, still managed to win the tournament. So that was how I made someone rage win at, a, at an event. So... So you heard it here, folks. <laughs> you need, and I, uh, I went and had a beer at the Catfish the... Place across the parking lot. Take two, three goes through, let's take two. Mm, catfish. Five. Um, yeah, no, catfish sorry, is two, delicious, three, by the way, when it's cooked well. It is. Okay, well, I'm gonna try to go down to Dallas, Texas for like some business meetings all the time, and they'd have like some really good catfish dishes. So good. Uh, Vinca. I'm at one. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, I find the yeah. more you play, the more you're just relaxed, accept variance, and mistakes happen. I've also accepted I do not play enough to be considered a good player. I am above average, but not good. I do think mindset's key. You know, if you go into it not expecting a whole lot when it happens, uh, you're just more equipped to deal with it. Okay, so I, can't I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like you have to be able to... Yeah, at the same time, you have to have experienced it to really kind of have an understanding of how to, how you're going to handle it personally. You kind of have to, and that experience just goes without saying. You know, you can experience doing well, but only in adversity do you really grow as a player. I like that. 
I know, very philosophical, wasn't it? I, it is, it's pretty deep. I, uh... It's, that's what people came for, they came for that deep philosophical... That's good, because my, uh, my podcast... Life. My podcast is pretty much just dick and fart jokes. Hmm. I thought, Bri Brian, I thought you were going to tell your story of uh, Iron Halo 20, 2014. That was 2015. 2015, excuse me. Yeah, I I had a Gary Busey moment and threatened to kill somebody. Uh, but we're beyond that now. It was, it was in the past, eh? It was. Did you know that I was the best sportsman at Iron Halo 2017? <laughs> Hey, that's a good turnaround. It I, is. How did you get that? I don't remember. What'd you do? Did because you... everybody enjoyed their experience playing me. Uh, I think it involved a cigar and whiskey. <laughs> Just because you give your opponents cigars and whiskey, it does not. It's not specifically that. It looks like you're enhancing the Bam Bam experience. Well, the, you have to have some sort of gimmick in order to really kind of win that best sportsman. Right? Absolutely, I had a plan. You know, you have to have a plan to win people's hearts and minds over. I did it right. Usually alcohol can be involved. It does. Jason was just surprised that I had people voting for me that didn't even play me. We call that rigged <laughs> collusion red card right there. <laughs> Seemed fishy. I don't know why, though. Yeah. It just—it was just a well-executed plan to redeem myself. Yeah, you know, with a year of build-up, I could see that. Yeah. Believe in me, he says. <laughs> Zero charisma. Can't afford whiskey. We'll start giving massages. As long as they're good massages, they that... go in all the right places. <laughs> yeah, just just don't get them like the New England Patriots owner, and you'll be cool. <laughs> Yes, that's right. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll determine my own happy ending. Thank you. Uh, so back to the game, folks. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like it's over. Yeah, we're just trying to make it entertaining. One of the reasons I love this is another comment in the chat. One of the reasons I love ATC, all the different regional alcohol you get to sample. Last year, I had like three different whiskeys. And wonderful moonshine. Man, I, I tell you what, I've had some moonshine that will uh, grow some hair on your chest. Stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple of teams at the ETC that definitely bring their own brews of alcohol. And before, you know, you go on to the match, they'll sit you down, they'll put the shot glasses on the table, they'll be like, you all have shots with us. And, uh, you know, that's sort of thing. Uh, Leave it to Team Wales to bring an inflatable sheep. Yes. <laughs> All right, folks, that's ball game. They're calling it. Uh, Jason, I believe, is going to set up the mobile cam and uh, go cool. around and check on some tables. Let's do it. Yeah, we're going to interview the players before we break out and do that. Give us a second. Yes. Yes, let's talk. Because that was, that was a three-game session. Josh, can I borrow you guys for two seconds? We're going to go on this side of the table. Of course, the interviewees can't hear me specifically. They however. cannot. So if you need to ask a question, Scarry, just pop it in my ear and I'll ask them. Okay, so my first question is for the Necron player. Question uh, for Josh. Why do Necrons suck so much? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't, don't ask that question. I was, it was a joke. You wanted me to ask you why Necrons suck so much. So. No, um, That's so... So that's why I've been playing this army, right? Um, because everybody's the just saying how terrible they are. Uh, talking about deployment, I want to know, didn't use the Immortals as a screen and potential, just in case he would have gone. I got you. Okay, in deployment, mm -hmm. how come you didn't use the Immortals as a screen as opposed to the bike unit? Bikes get more shots, they're higher toughness, and I thought that might be able to save the day. Uh, immortals usually win me the games, not the bikes. Uh, bikes are really good, but against this list, I, I figured the Immortals being able to do a lot more damage we can't probably would have really done hear better. Him at all. I, I thought I was going to go for it. Yeah, Josh, just a second. Okay. Check your mind. I can't hear him, but maybe other people can. All right, talk now, Josh. Okay. Scary, Scary, hold on a second. Scary, you're not going to be able to hear through Discord, but through Twitch. Oh, okay, perfect. Never mind then. Never mind? Okay. Very right. good, Josh. Go ahead, right. man. So I deploy the bikes up front to try to stop. The bikes have higher toughness. They can suck up, soak up a lot more wounds. 
They have the Crypt Tech behind them. Never mind. Um, the Immortals usually win the games because they're just super tough and they can take a lot of damage out. Um, try to stop the bomb. Yeah, I thought I was going to go first, uh, but, you know, that's what I banked on because I had to go first against this list to have a chance. Um, but all in all, I'm pleased with the game. It, it was fun and, yeah. uh, you know, it's what it is. I've seen the damage this list can do going first. Yeah. So I, I was, <laughs> when I saw you get that roll to go first, I was I was excited for you for a bit. Right. And then I saw Justin C's. How big was that C's roll? I was huge. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I played this list against Heath, your teammate, yeah. yesterday. Um, identical list. And it was the closest game that I played all weekend. Um, it was like a two-point game. 27-25, yeah. yeah. Um, and I honestly, I came up to um, a table yesterday and I said, man, because we got pushed off of the table because Heath had already played a game on the stream. And I, and I said, man, this, that, that would probably be like MVP game of the weekend for that. And I actually, I know, I mean, obviously I want to win. I'm a, I'm a you know, diehard competitor. But I actually, a part of me wanted him to go first because I wanted that challenge to, like, you know, play that same. Cause he so probably, yeah, because yeah. he because he probably had the exact same you know, strategy, move block the Dragoons, um, yeah. have the ability to, you know, take out a lot of the um, infantry with the 3D3 strat with the um, Doom Sights. So, um, and I know he probably talked to Heath uh, about the matchup. So, um, you know, I was I was interested to see what happened again. It was a little bit more of an open open battlefield. So I have the Dragoons were able to move point. a little bit. Um, just for years. What was the other question? Scar. It's um, it's. I feel like he could have salvaged that game, like in retrospect. After the first turn, do you think he could have done anything differently? with hindsight in order to pull the game out. Okay, just one second just to get back to you. Josh, got a question for you. Okay. In hindsight, knowing how the game went down, is there anything that you feel you could have done to pull that game out uh, after that turn one? After turn one, turn one was really rough. I don't know. I lost so much turn one. You know, my only chance I had coming back was kind of clearing out the walkers and doing damage, and it just didn't work out for me. Yeah. And I um, felt like once the one of the uh, Doomsday, or what are they, the Doomsides Doom Doom was gone, and losing that mortal output was huge. I lost two, and if yeah. I had two on the first, going into the second turn, I think I'd have been a lot better. Um, yeah. You know, and that's just, that's in hindsight. I mean, I could have maybe tried to do something different with my deployment, but with them, but you know, I was pretty safe in the back, I thought. And um, it just, it was, losing those uh, flyers was huge. Yeah. All right, and Justin, looking at the points going into that, Swiss points, uh, you guys both were like 20 ahead yeah. of third and fourth. Yeah. Uh, this probably won you the tournament. Awesome. Uh, unless one of them guys has like an amazing, yeah. you know, game, but I, I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, so uh, any, any takeaways, uh, anything you think you would have done differently? No, the, the hospitality in Conway was amazing. Um, Desperate Allies put on an unbelievable tournament. Yeah. The streaming, thank you so much for streaming. That was awesome. Um, I didn't have a single bad game. Everybody was cordial, and, and we had a great, respectful game. Even uh, Josh. Oh, it was great. <laughs> I, right. I, I mean, the only thing that I dislike, and, and I don't mean this negatively towards the um, towards the form, format of tournaments, but, you know, we're both one and two, and now he's going to drop to, like, fourth or fifth, and yep. he just played at the top table to win. And if he wins, he wins, and I dropped to fifth. So yeah. um, that's the only thing. I, I mean, for me, yeah, I mean, this so. was just – this is me trying to prove a point, you know, like I said yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, man. And you came to a major, yeah, four and one with Necrons. Yep. Pretty I awesome. Broke so many people dismiss and write off. Yeah. One of your teammates was pretty successful with Necrons. So uh, I, I think uh, I think nothing to hang your head at, man. Yeah, we've Thanks. got a we've got a player in St. Louis who plays Necrons, Jason Cook, and okay. yeah. and he's prepared me for matchups like this. So um, you know, it was it was a lot of fun, and I was excited. So. This was fun. Yeah, yeah. I man, appreciate it. Good game again. It. Thank you so much. Good games. Sure. Good, see you. Uh, good see you too, brother. I see. You. Homie of mine. I can oh, yeah. Give can, I, can I be a homie now? I'll think about <laughs> it. All right. I'll think about <laughs> it. <laughs> All right, guys. Jason's got the mobile cam. He's going to go around and hit up some of the tables, uh, check on third and fourth, and see where they're at. Stay tuned. Uh, Scarry's still in the chat as well. I am indeed. Turn We're off. getting ready. We're walking around the hall. And this is hey, going to be yeah. Me Jason, I'm going to let Scarry take this. I still don't know what's going on right now. There's a bit of lag on the stream. What I'm seeing. The hey, are Scary, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, awesome. So I'm going around the tables. Let me know if it kind of cuts out. I might have, uh, we're doing this via Wi-Fi, so it might be a little bit different, but 
Looks like this is table. Yep, table right two. Add mech. Um, and looks like chaos. I'm definitely. Are you are you moving away from where you were originally, or are you just adding into that? Mech? Oh, uh, so you probably won't be able to see it on the stream until probably ten seconds later. <laughs> but I'm just describing okay. the action. Yeah, yeah. So I can't really describe the action. How about? No, you? I'll just stay here for a little bit. And I'll let you know when I'm moving on. So yeah, we're seeing table numero dos. Uh, I see some cast and robots. Yep. Those noise grenades look cool. Yep. And then cool. Dread, dread claws are fun. They uh, definitely give chaos a little bit of maneuverability around the table. Definitely something to look into if you're a chaos player. It's uh, a knight of some sort. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a knight crest knight of some sort. If it's just one knight. A couple of Helverins. Uh, this is pretty standard. Uh, can we know what their uh, points are at Oop. right now in terms of the game? Oh, let me go back. Actually, that's probably a good call. This is our first experiment doing this, guys, in chat. We can't actually see the chat right now. Hey guys, what is your score right now? Eight to one, turn one. Still. Cool. Let's go still over. On turn one. Yeah. Holy All right, yeah. so we're going to move to another table. All right, let me describe this for you. Looks like two, three shadow swords. Ouch. Three super heavy tanks. Yes. How's he been doing in the event? Good, bad, ugly? Well, right now they're on turn three. And nine to, nine to eight. Pretty close. Pretty close game. Shadow swords versus death watch. Nice. Yeah, that guard does look really good, Bizarre Beast. Let's see, we got some Black Templars, is that? Or Death Watch? That was Death Watch, yep. Yep. There was Death definitely Watch. a little Death lag Watch. on the stream. That's okay. Mm, well, lag for me to be doing the shout casting while you're right, right. around like crazy. But this is all fun. We're all learning, understanding. Oh, this, is, this is great fun. I hope you guys in chat are enjoying this. You know, it's not every day you get a, a mobile camp going around and saying hello to the players. And cool. So you actually get to see who's playing, who's having fun, who's beating up other people. It's entertaining. Yep. Oh. So this table right here that we're featuring is Death Watch and looks like Blood Angels. Gonna say a uh, quick hello. Click hello to Mike. Hey, what was your name? Hello, Mike. You're Blake? Awesome. Tables look really good, too. You know? uh, make sure that if you guys are able to make your way down to events down in this area of the States, you know, they, it seems like they definitely take their tables seriously as well, which is good. Yeah, pretty awesome terrain for the event in general. We've been pretty happy, and uh, I think it's been a great time. We're going to say hi to the T.O., Andrew Taylor. This is, uh, can, can, we, can we make the announcement right now? The announcement of, of you? That you're, that this is the, uh, okay, hold on. He has to say something. So this, this is my last GT as a T.O. It's been fun. It's been six years. I, I've passed the reins on to somebody else, so we'll be doing this next year. Um, I'm going to go back to being a player. Just a lot of work from the job front, so I'm not going to be able to stay after this. But it's been a blast. We've grown every single year, and I do mean every single year. Always getting new players, always having fun. And we had a Necron player on the top table, which is, needless to say, interesting. Thanks, it is Jason. definitely interesting. Well, good luck, and that is awesome. I, as a fellow TO, I know how much work it is to do TOing stuff. So, all right, well, we're going to uh, 
Yeah, we're definitely going to uh, wrap up the stream. I want to thank you guys for watching all weekend. I think it was a blast. We're going to do more of this. We plan on going to more tournaments probably once a month. And Scary, you're definitely welcome to come back on. Absolutely. You just let me know, and I and your um, just will be able to hear my lovely voice. Yep, and I think it's going to be a blast. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, Dice. Well, before we get off, Scar, you want to promote your channel real quick? Yeah, for sure, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you want to see more Scardcast stuff, you can find me every day, Monday through Friday, on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash S-K-A-R-E-D-C-A-S-T where we do a live painting feed every single day. I'm currently painting an Eldar Revenant type. So that's a lot of fun if you want to uh, join into that. I also have the YouTube channel where you can see lots of Dark Eldar content, battle reports, tacticas, and more. And I can't wait to be back, so. Well, awesome. Thanks, Gary, for joining us. And... Uh... We appreciate you guys watching, and we'll have more coverage later. Thank and dice safely.